Welcome everybody. Thanks for joining us at Acoustic Hour. Quiet fireside chats. I'm just kidding. I'm just talking about my favorite guitars right now. So um, I haven't done one of these in a while. But this is my, without a doubt, favorite acoustic guitar that I own. I love it. I play it all the time. It kind of goes with me everywhere. I think it's just a joy and a treat. This is a 1942 Single Lot 17 Martin. It's wonderful. It's um, everything about this guitar from the story to playing it is great. It's never had a neck reset. It's never really been worked on. Somehow it's amazing. So this is my, my thought on this guitar. This is a testament to great guitars being built perfectly, standing the test of time, because we'll get into the test of time and the history of this. Um, it's had quite a, it's, it's traveled the world. It's seen everything. Um, it's survived wars. Drought, famine, but um, it came into my possession through a gentleman named Dick Cavito. Now he lives locally and he, he um, brought this guitar in and he offered it to me as a gift. And I said, oh, I can't take this from you, let me buy it. And he said, well, if you bought it, it wouldn't be a gift. And so we went back and forth for a while and he, he knows I do a lot of charity work with some of the uh, Irish groups I work with and the children's groups that I work with. And so, you know, it's. I, I, I let anyone play it and see it and I want it, I want it to be seen and sort of shared because that's what I think a guitar should be. It shouldn't be locked behind a glass wall and never touched and played again. It's a tool that's meant to be used and it can sort of tell stories. But anyway, Dick Vito, he is, um, he's still with us. He's, a, he's an older gentleman, I'd say a more seasoned fella, but he served in World War II and this was his guitar while he was overseas in Saudi Arabia. Um, he was a pilot in the Army Air Corps back then and in the early 40s when he went over he took this guitar with him and it survived but i'm just pointing out this little stamp here so that's the custom stamp from saudi arabia coming back which i love i'll never remove it i think it's just part of the guitar now if you remove it you'd probably just destroy the finish more but this guitar sat in the desert in the middle east for years while this gentleman was flying missions to um help us defeat the fascist powers that be at the time. And it was, it was out there, not in a case, leaning against an aircraft hangar, soaking up the desert suns. And look at this thing, it's in great shape. There's no bowing on it. It's, the neck's in great shape. The body is scratched to tar, but it's wonderful and I love it. I love that I can, it's light. I love, it's resonant. It's like if I hit it hard, it's just, it, not hit it hard, but if I strum it hard, it booms for a little tiny box like this. Because these guitars were, these were built as sort of student model affordable alternatives to, you know, the, the, the double O's and the 28's and the 18's even. It's just saw mahogany, but it sounds so good. When I first saw a video of Johnny Cash playing one of these, I think in the 70's, it was the, when the video was probably shot, and his massive powering presence was holding it, it looked so small, like a little toy ukulele. I just fell in love with the guitar, and then when... Dick brought this in. I was like, what a beautiful piece. He opened the case up and I knew exactly what it was and he did too and that's the fun of it. Um, but the love of the guitar and he, and, and he understood that like I love these things and love sharing them with people and I'm thrilled that I get to share it with you guys just that this thing exists. Oh, look at the back of the neck too. And it's in such great shape. It's a beautiful little monster. I really do love playing. It's got a little V-neck to it. It's just so comfortable. So wonderful, so warm, so flat in this pushing of tone. It's, it is a, it's the one that is my favorite instrument. I think we used it on a video we shot with James once too when he almost got hit by a train, which was a fun moment. It's out there on the YouTube somewhere. So go find that, James alone doing a video playing this guitar. In the train scene, he almost dies. In the train conductor, you can't see it in the video because we have sound playing, um, was saying some choice words at him as he went by. But regardless, I'd like to thank Dick Vito for making this guitar part of our universe and sharing it with everyone. Thanks Martin for making this guitar out there. Thank you guys for all watching this because this is the way we spread the love of the instrument, of the craftsmanship of building a great instrument and not just cheap disposable guitars that have become commonplace in some of the aspects of our world. Like this is a properly built instrument built here in the US of A, traveled the world, changed my life, changed a few other lives along the way. I hope it will inspire you to pick up the guitar if you have one sitting in the corner. But this is my baby. I'll take her with me wherever I go. Thanks for tuning in and watching. Casino Guitars, Baxter, signing out.
Thank you.